Today we're going to talk about windows and why not all double glaze windows are high performing. Windows and glass doors are the key components in any houses because it keeps you in connect with the nature, having natural lights coming in, but at the same time, it allows the solar heat to come in. And unfortunately, almost all the doors and windows are weaker compared to your walls and roof because they have much less insulation. So how should we choose what kind of glazing material to be put in the doors and windows? Today, we are going to give you some tips. Let's dive in. When we're talking about the performance of windows, the first thing is not actually the number of layers of glass you put in that window, but rather what type of window you are using. For example, if you have double sash window, it's very hard to make it energy efficient because of the design, because of the physical limitation, you are very, very difficult to eliminate air leakage through a double sash windows. And likewise, if you compare sliding doors and window to casement window, you will find that casement window almost always performs superior. So that is lesson number one. You need to think about what type of um, window arrangement you are going to have. And then number two is actually what kind of window frame you're talking about, especially if you got smaller window. Little, tiny, small windows. Because the smaller the window, the higher the proportion of the frame become. And the performance of the frame will start to dominate how much energy is passing through. Traditionally, if we're using timber window, then it's not as bad or as much a problem when compared to aluminum because of course timber itself is a reasonable insulator and doesn't allow a lot of heat to pass through but when we're talking about multi-story building or even double story building the windows on the first floor you may still want to use um, aluminum window because of the maintenance issue you can't paint the outside all the time so there is a delicate um, balance we need to consider and bring in other factors. What is in my hand is something called the PVC frame. So the actual frame itself is made by plastic material. So it's fairly insulative and it is reinforced with some metal in key area. But because they already separated from the surface interfacing indoor and outdoor condition, so it won't have as much an impact compared to the traditional aluminum window. And the other component that we should consider is how well the air seal is being built into the frame. As you know, efficiency matrix is famous for air tightness. So this is something that we, is very close to our heart. We've been talking about the window design and the window frame. Now we come to something that everybody knows about, which is the glass itself. Typically, when we're talking about a glass unit, we worry about how thick that is and maybe how many layers. But when you try to understand the performance of glass, there are a lot more different aspects you need to take into consideration. If I try to go through them all, I think three quarters of you would fall asleep, but just give you some a taste of it. Number of glass is one thing, but also if you look at it from the side, between the two layers of the glasses, there's something here to keep the space between the two, which is what we call the spacer. Traditionally, we use aluminum as the material for the spacer. As you can imagine, it will become an energy superhighway for the heat to go between inside and outside. So it's not ideal. And then later on, um, the manufacturers start to introduce steel spacer which is maintaining the strength of the material and slightly improve the um, thermal performance steel is not as conductive compared to aluminum and then recently in australia we finally got more and more foam spacer which using rigid foam 
as the material which is highly insu insulative so it's improved the performance of especially smaller windows significantly because the impact on the spacer would have certain distance away into the center of glass and typically when we talk about the performance of the glass unit we're only talking about the center part which is free from the impact along the frame we are moving on to something not as tangible now um, the next thing is have you ever thought about the space between the two layers of glass? How thick it is would have a major impact on the performance. Based on a lot of research done in the US, we understood that the optimum gap is roughly 12 and a half millimeter or half an inch in the US. When you have the gap smaller than that because of the close proximity between the two layers of glass, the heat exchange become more. However, some glazing manufacturer claim you want larger gaps, but if you have anything over that optimum 12 to 13 mil and going starting to um, around 25 mil, you start to induce convection inside the double glazed unit, which will speed up the heat exchange between the inside layer and the outside layer of glass. So be very careful. And on that front, we need to understand that the double glazed unit, 99% of them, we have gas in the gap. And most commonly, the gap is either filled with normal gas, which is air, or something we call the argon gas, which is similar to the behavior of air, but because it's heavier, so it is harder to convect. And you will gain some reduction in the heat transfer performance. If you are willing to pay more, you can even get a higher performance noble gas called Krypton. Well, it's got nothing to do with Superman or Kryptonite, but it's just a similar pronounce. Krypton is even more heavier compared to argon. The optimum gap between the two layers of glass would be smaller because you have a heavier gas. But personally, I wouldn't spend that extra money on having Krypton to fill the gap. There's two reasons. First, the performance gain is so marginal for Australian climate. We have a mild climate, so the extra performance may not be that important for us. And number two, because no matter what gas you fill inside this unit, gradually it will degrade. And most manufacturers would give you a rough figure of 1% lucid per year because argon and air have a similar optimal gap size. So even the content of argon gas is degrading, you are not losing the performance because of the thickness of the glass. But if you fill that with krypton and use the optimum distance between 6 to 8 mil for krypton, then once you the krypton leak out of the unit you got a much worse performing glass that's the reason that's about the assemble of the glazing unit and we still haven't talked about the actual glass what does it make up of what is coated on it or tinted in it and that we will be covering that in the next video but before i say goodbye for today i want to introduce the concept Instead of trying to figure out everything that we are covering today, like the thickness, the gap size, the type of material for the frame, the glass and everything, what you should look for is the performance value, which typically for windows is the U value, which talks about how much heat transfer through the unit, including the glazing and the frame. And also the other factor is called the SH. GC, solar heat gain coefficient, how much of the solar sun ray is passing through this unit to warm up the indoor of the house. So you always look for those two numbers. You want the U value as low as you can. That means minimal heat is passing through the unit. And the solar heat gain factor, that depends on where you are located and where the window is positioned. 
So that may require some extra analysis with your design team, your builder, or your architects. In Australia, almost all new residential houses are governed by something that we call the Netter system, which is a computer rating system that gives you something that we can understand as energy budget. Each house, depending on where you built, would have certain energy budget that you need to achieve by using different types of wall, roof, and combination of windows and doors. And that governs what type of doors and windows and the size of the doors and windows that you can choose from. Before we make a decision on what type of material or what kind of windows we use, first we need to get some understanding of your energy budget. And based on that, you make the choice.